What is up guys, Travis here, and today we're talking swim baits. But before we do so, I wanna get something out in the open. I think swim baits are super sexy. There, I said it. There's nothing that mimics bait fish more realistically than swim baits. And today, we're using the Ragnar Berserker, which is a three-segmented swim bait to break down the basics. Because I know these things, can they, they can be frustrating. They can be intimidating. And if you know the basics, just where to throw this, when to, when to throw it, you will have more confidence in going out there and having some success. So let's break down this technique, starting with rigging. Okay, let's get right to rigging. This thing is super simple. Starting with line. I use anywhere from an eight to a 15 pound mono or fluorocarbon. Now remember, the heavier the line you use, the more you're going to uh, give up action of this bait. L a lighter line is thinner in the water and has less resistance, so it's not gonna restrict that swim bait searching around and really having that action. But conversely, the lighter line you go, the more you're opening yourself up to uh, breaking fish off around cover or just uh, the fish being able to pull hard enough on a weak spot of the line and breaking you off. Then for my reel, it's real simple. I just use a medium speed gear ratio. Um, I like to change my uh, retrieve speed a lot, which we're gonna talk here in, in the next segment. But uh, so just your favorite uh, bait casting reel will work great. Lastly, I have the hybrid stick right here. Uh, you want your favorite cranking rod. You want a lot of bend, that moderate bend in that rod, uh, because what's gonna happen, you have a lot of bend, that lets that bait really have the action as, uh, as well. If you have too stiff of a rod, that's gonna make that bait just kind of track straight instead of getting that great swim bait-like look. Lastly is the bait itself. Um, very easy, just tie it on with your favorite knot. I use a Palomar right out of the package. But one thing I wanna to talk to you about real fast is the tail. This little tail gives this bait a lot of action, but if you close this in your tackle box or something and you let it and you store it incorrectly, that tail is gonna get all tweaked out. Um, don't freak out, you want this to be straight. And if it's not, if you see the bait running wrong and you look at this tail and it's a little messed up, just bend it the opposite way until you finally uh, get it straight. You might have to put it underneath something heavy uh, for a couple minutes until it straightens out enough, but that's very important to get this bait running correctly. When it comes to retrieving this bait, I like to say learn your bait. You've got to go out and experiment with yourself. Depending on the line you're using, the rod you're using, just the type of fisherman you are, this bait is going to give you different results than it's going to give me. So this is what I do for pretty much every new bait I use. What I'll do is I'll make short little casts. The first thing I want to know, how slow can I reel this bait and it still have action, okay? When I'm looking right now, I can see this bait. It's, it's got a nice little wobble to it. It looks really good. But if I slow it down too much, it stops swimming and it just starts sinking down and it doesn't look good. So I now know what my slowest retrieve uh, I can get away with is. Then the next thing, if you can't guess it yet, uh, you're not following along very well, is how fast can I reel? Now, I want to be able to speed this thing up, and if, but at a certain point, it's going to turn over on its side, it's going to come up on the surface, and it's not going to run correctly. So I want to know what speed that bait is still running true and uh, look, you know, doing what it needs to be doing down there. Um, then the next thing is the sink rate. I'm going to reel this bait all the way to the top and I'm going to let it sink down. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004. So right now I'm looking, at, it sinks probably about a foot a second, maybe a little bit slower, but that's important as I'm fishing this throughout the day and I want to get that bait a little deeper, I'll cast out and I'll count down to my head and that way I'll kind of know where this bait is in that water column. Then lastly, it's time to accessorize. You got to know some little tricks. You got to know some little, you know, the little flair you can give this little bait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast this out and I'm going to experiment. Twitches with the rod. Well, with this bait, if you twitch too much, the bait just kind of goes on its side, it, it rolls and stuff, but if you give it just little twitches, oh man, you'll see this bait, it, it gets wide little, uh, little quick wide turns and stuff, which can really trigger some bites. The other thing I like with this bait is, as I'm reeling this, if I just pause just for a split second, this bait will do a, a big old wide turn. So it, it would, when I'm reeling, 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 just slow down to stop, go. It, makes this nice wide turn, almost turns around. Uh, it does a, almost a 180. That can be huge on triggering fish. So what you're gonna do when you're out fishing, now I know, okay, if I'm reeling about this speed, I know this bait's running true. And if I just stop real quick, 
keep reeling, stop real quick. I know that bait's giving uh, some different little action right there and it can that can be key in triggering those strikes. When you're out here, you really want to focus though what those fish are uh, responding to. There's times when they just want it reeled in really quick. There's times they want it reeled, retrieved really slow. And then there's times they want those little pauses. So every once in a while when you throw in that little pause and you get bit, think about what, what just happened right there. You threw in the pause. That probably means fish are tracking it, but they're not eating it. And when you did that pause, that was what they needed to see. So keep doing that if you want to catch some more fish, right? But now that we know how to work this bait, we now need to know where to throw it. There are some key times of the day, places that you can maximize your chances of actually catching some fish on the old swim bait. So let's get to it in location. All right guys, where to throw the swim bait. Before we talk about the exact places, let's first talk about the right times to be throwing a swim bait. And when are fish feeding the most? I always talk about this low light conditions. Bass, they want to improve their odds of catching prey. And when it's darker out, the fish have a better chance of sneaking up, ambushing their prey, and having success in eating, right? So that is first thing in the morning, late evening, if there's any kind of cloud cover. And then the little bonus is wind. Wind can be your friend. I know it's frustrating, but wind can, can be a huge trigger to turning the fish on, especially in the middle of the day when the bite seems tough, you find a little wind blown point and it can get real crazy real fast. The other thing that when fish decide they wanna eat, when they're, when they're going and they got the right conditions, they become more predictable. Um, because they're gonna go to the, the key ambush places. So if you've got lay down logs or you got a little point, all your favorite places where you go, oh, that's a fishy spot, man, there should be a fish here. Well, in those conditions, that low light, uh, any kind of wind, they're gonna come and they're gonna be more predictable to set up on those ambush spots. And then you can just throw something like this, uh, a swim bait right over it and you will get them. Now, my boy Byron Velvic, the, one of the OG swim bait guys and one of the also the OG bachelors, um, was master the swim bait long before everyone else. And, and he swears, sunny days with a little bit of breeze. That's his favorite time in the world to be fishing and, and also to be throwing a swim bait. And if you can pull up on little points or uh, anything that got that wind coming up against, uh, you could end up catching cheeseburger fish. So if you just cast that out there, slow little retrieve across a point. You don't have to give it much action because those fish, they're cheeseburger fish, which means they will, if you throw a cheeseburger at them, they're gonna eat it. So you just throw a nice realistic swim bait with a slow retrieve, they're gonna smash it. Now, um, if you go out and you see that you're getting fish uh, just following it, you're out first thing in the morning, there's not much breeze and everything, and, and you're reeling this bait in and you're seeing fish come up to it and then dive back down or follow it all the way to the boat, but they're not committing to it, you've got to add in your accessories. That's why we talked about accessorizing earlier. So those little adjustments you can do are key. Now remember, when you have those right conditions, you want to be throwing it in the ideal spots. Don't just go down a random bank like I'm doing right now and just be randomly throwing. Go to those the, the key, key spots. Right now, I'm not on the main lake because it's a little too windy. You're not going to be able to hear me. It's going to blow out my mic. But right now, I, I, as soon as I finish this take, I'm going out on the, uh, on the main lake and I'm going to start throwing in the wind and I'm going to show you what this bait can do. But you want to go to those main lake points, secondary points, any kind of little point that's got the wind coming across it, perfect. You got some boulders on there, ooh, now you're really playing with fire. Throw a log in on the end of that, dude, go back to that multiple times if you need to. Anyway, hit up the key spots when you know you have the right conditions and then play with the retrieve on this and you're gonna like it. All right, we got the wind here. Wind's coming through, got a little bit of mud line coming off this point. Sticks right out in the middle of this lake and even it's got some rocks. Nice little rock pile at the end of it. I'm gonna make several casts out over this point. Now what I wanna try, oh, got him. Oh yeah, ha <laughs> ha. Wow, come on baby, stay on, stay on. I barely got him hooked, barely got him hooked. There we go. Guys, that was how you do it. Anyway guys, Throwing swim baits, it's all about 
knowing the swim bait, you gotta know the action, so when you make these long casts, you know the bait is working the way it's supposed to, and then it's maximizing the time that you're spending fishing on the right places. If it's a calm day, there's not much wind and stuff, probably don't throw the swim bait too much, probably go with something else, but if you get it first thing in the morning, late in the evening, you got cloud cover, or you got that sun, a little bit of wind, like old Byron Velvet gloves, throw the swim bait, you're gonna like the results. Good luck out there, subscribe to our channel, comment in the comment section below, I always make sure that I comment back. I'll see you guys in the next video.